more than any other issue, for Supreme Court justices, race defines the judicial legacy of a chief justice. We've had many examples. Justice Taney's words are now household words. His words uttered in Dred Scott versus Sanford that blacks have no rights that a white man is bound to respect. You don't need to be a lawyer to be aware of Taney's quote and that whatever his other achievements during the time of his service as Chief Justice, his role in the Dred Scott decision, which many believe led to the Civil War, are all that we remember about his legacy. Chief Justice Fuller presided over Plessy versus Ferguson that set us on a course of separate and unequal for more than a half century. We don't know much about this Chief Justice, but many school children can tell you about Plessy versus Ferguson. On the other hand, Chief Justice Warren did many things before he became Chief Justice. In fact, he presided in part over the uh, over the internment of the Japanese in California during World War II. But most people don't think about that part of his history. Instead, we think about Chief Justice Warren not only as the person who engineered a unanimous opinion in Brown versus Board of Education, but also a Chief Justice who brought to our country many constitutional rights and protections that we all take for granted today. That's his legacy. So today, I want to talk about Chief Justice Roberts, tell you a little bit about who he is. And then I want to talk about the race cases his court has considered. What are some of the themes from those cases? And if we view these three cases as examples, what will be Justice Roberts' equality legacy? <clears throat> Who is Chief Justice Roberts? When Sandra Day O'Connor resigned in 2005 from the Supreme Court, President Bush nominated John Roberts to replace Justice O'Connor. Unfortunately, Chief Justice Rehnquist died shortly after that nomination. President Bush saw an opportunity to make Roberts, then a judge, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So he withdrew the nomination of Roberts to be an Associate Justice and nominated him instead to be the Chief Justice and nominated Judge Alito to take the place of Sandra Day O'Connor. President Bush saw something in Judge Roberts that he wanted at the head of the Supreme Court. So who is this man? He's confirmed September 29, 2005, with 78 yes votes, 22 no votes, but he received more yes votes than any other Chief Justice. 17th Chief Justice of the United States, the third youngest Chief Justice, 11 years younger than the prior three Chief Justices. <clears throat> Earl Warren was 62 when he was appointed. Warren Burger, 61 when he was appointed. And William Rehnquist, 60. So a very young Chief Justice. We expect him to have a lengthy tenure. Supreme Court justices seem to serve a long time and live a long time. Uh, the preceding chief justices served through their late 70s and 80s, and he could be chief justice for more than 30 years. Who was he prior to becoming chief justice? A young fellow, I can say that, from Buffalo, New York. Harvard University, Law, Harvard University, and Harvard University Law School, a graduate magna cum laude in 1979. What's his professional background? He was a law clerk to Justice Rehnquist early in his career. He served the Reagan administration 
first as special assistant to the Attorney General, William French Smith, and I want to note that President Reagan had promised his voters that he would begin the process of dismantling affirmative action if he were elected president, and he chose um, he, his attorney general chose uh, then lawyer Roberts to help with that particular objective. He was associate counsel to President Reagan for a while. Then he cycled into private practice at an important law firm, Hogan and Hartson, where he developed a track record for being an outstanding appellate advocate. He argued many cases before the Supreme Court. He came back into service as Deputy Solicitor General, arguing cases for the United States during the presidency of George Herbert Walker Bush, and then back into private practice for a time where he became distinguished as an appellate advocate, and then finally on the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. So an amazing background and an interesting background. <laughs> 